Hey, we're at USA Nathan, and this is our home Eddie. He's a Toyota Hiace from 1992. We picked Eddie up about eight months ago, and he was in pretty bad condition. So we stripped him out and redone the inside. So come take a look at what we've done. This is our kitchen. When we first got Eddie, we decided to redesign him using permaculture principles as much as we possibly could. The key of that is creating a natural space and using a lot of recycled and renewable materials. So pretty much everything you see here has either been bought from an op shop or a secondhand store, or we've got it through other means via trading or just people giving it to us. With the kitchen here, we wanted to create a kitchen that formed a habit in us, and that is the habit of producing less waste and using a lot less plastics and materials which don't break down in the environment. So as you can see here, we've utilized this back wall as a space to keep our jars, and we fill these up at bulk stores. But often what you find is if everything's in cupboards, it feels really unmotivating to try and cook. So this has worked out really well. And then up here, we've got all of our fresh veg, which we buy regularly, so it manages to stay fresh without the fridge. And we eat primarily a raw vegan diet, so this is pretty much everything that we eat. When we first bought Eddie, we already knew that he was going to be at home for a short period of time while we were here filming in New Zealand. And that meant that we wanted to have a nice natural space, which wasn't going to cost us too much money to make. So what we tried to do was just take as much from the natural space without damaging the, the nature around us, and also taking materials that had previously been just waste and repurposing them to create a nice home. So in the end, it did turn out to only be, for the general construction, about $40. Um, but then that doesn't include the solar panel and the batteries and the jars. <laughs> There's a couple of things which it costs a bit more. And it's just kind of showing like a blueprint of you don't have to go out and spend thousands of pounds to make a van and you don't have to damage the environment by doing it. So in the middle here we have our sink and it's just, it was the only new thing that we bought actually and it's uh, an oven tray which we've turned into the sink. And this is the water which runs off the solar power. So under here, we have the fresh water and the dirty water. And that keeps us going for about a week. We use about 25 liters. Under this side, we have the toilet. We don't actually use this toilet. It's here for regulation purposes. So for the most part, we're always going out to use public toilets. Uh, there's plenty here in New Zealand, so it's not a problem. In this crate here, we keep our cooking utensils. Uh, we don't have much. We do have a small gas canister for if we want to have some hot food every now and then. And we have a blender, which is super useful. These crates are a really important part of our design because we wanted to make it multi-purpose and multifunctional. So in the night, they actually make up part of the bed, but in the daytime, you can take them outside or Josie likes to cook standing up. So um, we can just put that there and it can be an extra table for, for cooking on. Me personally, I just like to use them for lounging about. And for me, I like to cook here. So this is a perfect workspace for that. Welcome to our bedroom area. This is one of my favorite parts of the van and even though the van is actually so small it feels like it's so big because there's so many ways we can set it up. The bed here has three different setups which is a full bed where we use the cushions here which we use in the daytime as sitting up against the window or as a workspace on them which goes down the cracks and it folds out the full bed which is perfect for Nathan and I. And now our setup is that we can push one third of the bed in and then we can actually sit here as if it was a normal table and we can sit and work at our amazing little desktop and work office here. Yeah. 
everything that we put our time towards now is working towards us becoming social entrepreneurs. So we're using different medias and different ways of trying to get stories out that are going to create change in the world. And right now we are working on two major projects, which is our feature length documentary and also Responsible Van Life, which is an online platform for people to learn about how to live van life more responsibly. The bamboo here, we have just harvested from the side of the road. Um, and then I have sewn these five curtains from Matilda as well from the up shop. Our ceiling is made of a New Zealand native plant called flax, which is actually green when it's, when it's fresh. But after we have had it up for now, a few months, four or five months, it's over time dried up and become this really beautiful sandy beige color, which just perfectly match into the theme of our van. Nathan, she took on the task to weave the whole ceiling, which took him two days, um, harvest it inside of the road, and it's so worth it. We get so many compliments for it, and every day when I'm sleeping and looking up, it feels so good to have incorporated nature more again. We have a lot of plants in, in the van. We can't get enough of them. As you can see, we try to take nature as much as we can inside. The more self-sufficient we can be in the van, the better. So we're trying to grow as many herbs as possible in here. So we have uh, mint and we are growing some chilies. Haven't quite got to chili state yet, but it's getting there. Uh, we have a good curry plant here and a peace lily as well as we have our herbs up in the kitchen as well. So our light set up in here in the van is super simple. We were considering a lot back and forth how we should do it until we came across these super handy functional lights which comes with rechargeable batteries. So we charge them as we're driving and they pretty much last two weeks. That's super great because we can move them around and get them to light in whatever direction we need to in the evening. Otherwise, we have our fairy lights. What the challenges we're having this Toyota highest and the size of it um, has definitely been for me that I've been able to stand up on none of us house. Yes. <laughs> we would not have chosen a van like this one if we knew that we're going to live in it for more than a year. We definitely know that a van where we can stand up is very prioritized, as well as, again, creating more sitting spaces or seating spaces where we can sit and work. Under the bed here is where we have storage for all of our other things. So this is a culture of oyster mushrooms, and we get a batch out of that every two weeks. They are super tasty. Uh, around this side, up on the roof, we have a roof rack, and that's primarily for surfboard and solar panel. Actually, on top of the surfboard there, we have a second-hand suitcase, which we just use for putting in our wetsuits and diving gear and things like that. Uh, on the other side, we have the solar panel. So that's a 110-watt solar panel, and it runs down to a deep-cycle battery behind the driver's seat. And that's uh, 82 amp hours, uh, which is enough for us to charge our laptops and blend up some hummus and keep the lights going things like that. When it's cloudy, we do also run it off of the engine. So there is a switch so that we're able to top it up with engine power if it's not sunny. Just one of the most important messages is, you know, if you don't have to live the way everyone else lives, you can just go out and do what you want. It doesn't have to be van life either. That barrier is only perceived, and it's only once you make that step across it that you realize how easy it can be. There are challenges, but it's totally worth it. Yeah.